Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Lenski um, and I'm going to be talking today about improving the security and usability of TLS in MariaDB. Uh, I've been in Amazon Web Services open source core team working on MySQL and MariaDB databases for about two years. I've also contributed to a lot of open source software, uh, including most relevantly here, the OpenConnect VPN client, uh, which uses TLS and related protocols to uh, secure connections to a whole lot of different kinds of VPNs. Quick outline, I'm going to give some background and motivation for what TLS is, why do we need it in applications like MariaDB, then I'm going to give a critical look at TLS in MariaDB, I'm going to propose some solutions, and we should have some time at the end for live questions. So first, the background. What is TLS? Why do we need it? How have those needs changed over time? Uh, TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. Uh, it's designed to provide privacy and security to other network protocols. Um, early versions of it were called Secure Sockets Layer, SSL. That name, SSL, has proved to be very sticky, even though it's 25 years out of date, and it's still used, including in MySQL and MariaDB. And the TLS protocols have been revised over time to improve security, uh, and the goal here has been not just to fix known vulnerabilities, but also to think about newer and more sophisticated threat models against TLS. So TLS promises applications and their developers and users that if it's used correctly, it will provide end-to-end -end encryption and authentication. Applications can create a confidential channel over an untrusted network, and it provides peer authentication. Clients can use TLS to cryptographically verify that they've established that channel with the intended server. And for the folks writing the code, TLS aims to be a drop in replacement for unencrypted network connections like TCP and their programming interfaces. So a lot of applications, including MySQL, started adding support for TLS uh, at the beginning of the century. And it's worth thinking about what were the privacy and security concerns then, what were the threat models that users were worried about. And I don't want to oversimplify this too much, but the big concern is that everything on the internet was in plain text. If you could capture my packets, you could read them. So if we think about a computer library such as I might have been in in 2005, uh, one kind of threat would have been an opportunistic eavesdropper. Let's say this woman here is running Fire Sheep, a browser extension that could be used to steal Facebook and Webmail logins by sniffing the wireless network traffic. Or we might have to deal with a, some kind of very simple sensor, like a router that looks for BitTorrent packets or HTTP requests that are trying to download executable files, decides that those are threats, and injects TCP resets to kill those connections. Very frustrating if you have a legitimate use for those. Since then, we've had ever-increasing computing power. More and more of everything is online. More people studying internet protocols, better organized and better funded attackers, and more sophisticated threats to privacy and security on the internet. And approaches that were good enough back in 2005 no longer are, and applications and protocols need to keep up with this. So one thing that I think we've all observed over the past 20 years is a consolidation of the control over the networks that we use. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, MySQL server might have been uh, running on a small LAN operated by a university or on the premises of a small company. Now we're mostly using large wireless networks uh, and running applications inside uh, data centers that may be outside of our direct control. We also had a lot of revelations about the extent and uh, expense that governments are putting into internet surveillance, starting with uh, Snowden's disclosures in 2013 and continuing since then. So as a result of these kinds of changes, we need to think about pervasive attackers uh, who can observe basically all of our network traffic, including intelligence or censorship agencies, internet service providers, data centers, and collaborations among those groups. 
So what do we think these pervasive attackers can do? We think they can track any of our network connections statefully, meaning they can see my attempt to connect to a particular server, uh, maintain information about that connection, uh, and follow it over time. They can inspect and log and inject packets at any unencrypted layer. They can fingerprint for vulnerable software versions, and they can research and discover vulnerabilities on their own and exploit them without public disclosure. They can also inject attacks that are targeted against specific individuals or groups. So this gives us a lot to worry about, but I wouldn't say it's a need for despair. There's been a very consistent expert consensus over the last 10 years that whatever the capabilities of the most sophisticated intelligence agencies in the world may be, TLS implemented and used correctly is a very strong defense uh, against these kinds of pervasive attackers. We do know that they exploit vulnerabilities, so that means we need to use well-funded, well-tested, and standards-compliant technologies like up-to-date TLS libraries. Also, these pervasive attackers can do a machine-in-the-middle attack. Uh, and so clients must verify servers' identities. That kind of attack is very fundamental to some of the vulnerabilities I'm going to describe here, so I want to talk about it in detail. Basically, I might have an application running on my phone that wants to connect to some remote MariaDB server. So I try to create a TCP connection to it and then start a TLS handshake. But the machine in the middle, rather than allowing that TCP TLS handshake to go through, it uh, splits it and completes two TLS handshakes, one with me, the client, and one with the server. If we don't detect this condition and abort the connection, then I, the client, will think I have an end-to-end -end encrypted channel with the server, but it's actually with the MIDM, and the server thinks it has a channel with me, but it's actually with the MIDM. Uh, an attacker who's done this successfully can read, relay, and modify traffic just as if it were unencrypted. So in order to defeat this, clients need to have a mechanism to verify server identities. Unfortunately, TLS and related infrastructure give us tools to do this. So what do users expect from TLS? I would say that TLS or SSL is a brand. And if I look on the websites of major uh, companies, um, to see how they advertise their product security, they often reference TLS or SSL. So here's just a smattering, including MariaDB, Amazon, Skype, F5, uh, and uh, Credit Card Issuers Consortium. If an application says TLS or SSL is in use, users expect the data transmitted to be without the possibility of eavesdropping, forgery, or interference. And if those expectations are violated, then saying that TLS is supported and enabled is at best incomplete and at worst quite dangerous and misleading for the users. So users really expect to be protected against these modern threat models. Many users know that they want TLS but not how to use it well. So applications should make it as easy as possible to use TLS securely by default. That means good design, secure by default configuration, fail secure behavior, simple configuration, good documentation, including communication about changes that affect security. Also, if a feature makes it too easy to use the software insecurely and there's a better re replacement for it, remove it. So now I want to take a look at how TLS is used in MariaDB. Um, and I'm going to start by describing an overarching technical problem that I see and the resulting vulnerabilities and then move in the direction of some user experience problems. So first, if an application or protocol wants to be able to switch to TLS, that needs careful design. Like many applications, MariaDB starts out with a plain TCP socket and then switches to using TLS over the same TCP socket. It's called opportunistic TLS or start TLS. This needs to be designed so that it is backwards compatible with peers who can't do TLS, if necessary. And it also needs to ensure that TLS-capable peers are protected against downgrade attacks that might prevent them from using TLS or degrade the security of their TLS con uh, connection. And it should leak as little information as possible. One way that this can be done is by throwing out any data or configuration that's exchanged before switching to TLS. If the state of an application is influenced by the state 
uh, before the handshake, then that results in information leakage and the possibility of downgrading or forgery. Um, so if you want to implement a mechanism for switching to TLS correctly, you should start with designing the protocol for doing that, not the other way around. Think about if it'll meet the requirements in terms of security and backwards compatibility. Then you should use language features and good program design to ensure that pre-TLS and post-TLS state are isolated. Make sure that your code doesn't use global variables, no long-lasting stateful God object that exists before the TLS connection and after, and make the code as compact and self-contained as possible. And so here I've given the sketch of some C code that could do this, um, and it highlights these features like what, like doing a TLS handshake immediately, uh, using a TLS library to do it as soon as it knows the client wants that, throwing out the information that was exchanged before the TLS handshake, and then not creating a stateful application state object until after that handshake is uh, complete, and then isolating that in its own function, keep it as short as possible, and isolating it from the surrounding code. I had a bunch of slides here trying to highlight problems in the MariaDB server and client code for switching to TLS. I think the level of detail wasn't right and uh, they were too long as well. So I'm just gonna give you some of my thoughts after studying this code. I think that the protocol for switching to TLS has a flawed design. Seems to have been added as an afterthought without thinking about some of these issues. Um, there's a lot of global state and spaghetti code, if, then, else, hard to follow, hard to read, test, or simplify, and that applies to both the server and client implementations. There's no separation of concerns between the code that's responsible for setting up TLS and setting up the application connection parameters and authentication. There's very little separation of application state before, pre, uh, before the TLS handshake and after the TLS handshake. There's also a very large amount of code involved. Most of it lives in a file called SQL ACL CC, which is 15,000 lines long and includes code for multiple authentication methods in addition to TLS setup and general application and connection setup. So a number of vulnerabilities uh, result from this. Uh, and Using these vulnerabilities, pervasive attackers who can intercept MariaDB connections can undetectably downgrade those connections to plain text or undetectably midim the TLS uh, uh, with the two TLS handshakes like I showed earlier. They can mislead clients and denial of service attack them by sending forged errors with no TLS awareness needed whatsoever. Uh, they can fingerprint clients for location-specific information like character sets, and they can fingerprint clients for specific software versions and launch other attacks based on those. The first two of these can be defended by verifying server certificates in the client, but unfortunately that is not on by default, and it's surprisingly hard to configure, so a lot of users just don't. Um, so here's a vulnerability. I reported in early June, which is that clients improperly trust errors sent before the TLS handshake. Basically, client software that's using TLS should not trust messages that are allegedly sent by the server before the TLS handshake is complete, but MariaDB connector C clients do. Um, the code where this vulnerability exists is a function called myRealConnect in the client library, and it has um, couple hundred lines of fairly complex code before this problem appears. It's quite hard to read the code and figure out whether or not uh, the client has switched to TLS yet at this point, and I think that's one reason for the vulnerability's existence. So what can be done with this? A client tries to connect to a server with TLS. A minimum attacker injects a fake error packet. Looks like this on the wire, plain text, not encrypted. This error packet contains a specific error code that the attacker controls and a specific message that the attacker controls. And the connector C library will report these errors as a real error coming from the real server with no indication that they were sent before the TLS handshake. It's true that clients need the ability to report certain errors before TLS handshakes complete. 
uh, for things like failure to do DNS lookup or failure to verify server certificate, but those error conditions are determined by the client and they should not involve trusting information sent by the server before the handshake. I was asked when I reported this uh, if I think it's a problem and I would say in terms of immediate risks, I don't know of a way that this vulnerability can be used to extract or manipulate data in a MariaDB database, so that's good, but it's trivial to use it for denial of service attacks. You can inject wrong password errors to convince clients to stop retrying or inject temporary failure messages to get them to keep retrying or inject things like out of resources errors to get clients to stop trying this server and try and connect to another one perhaps. There's a lot of potential for mischief here. Uh, then in terms of future risks, um, I discovered this because I was trying to add a mechanism in the protocol for servers to send error messages to clients telling them to redirect to another server. Uh, but as long as this bug or something like it exists, the MariaDB protocol can't evolve in that way. Uh, we definitely don't want the clients taking consequential actions like connecting to another server based on error messages if those error messages can so easily be forged. So this imposes some limitations on ways that the protocol can evolve. I created a fix for this issue in Connector C. It's very small. It's been up since June 12th, and I revised it based on some feedback from Sergey Golubchik and Andrew Hutchings. Next, uh, later in June, I reported uh, a couple of JIRAs, which I pair together as vulnerabilities that result from badly designed uh, protocol for switching to TLS. Basically, clients send too much information before the TLS handshake, and the servers require them to do it. And this results from the poor design of the protocol for switching to TLS in MySQL and MariaDB. Basically, the expectation that a uh, near identical information rich greeting packet gets sent once in plain text and once over TLS. And in this pre TLS greeting packet, clients reveal their capabilities, which indicate certain options that the user has configured, but also information about the version of the client software and what version of the protocol it supports. And then the clients also reveal their preferred character set and, and collation in plain text. So the risks of this is that it gives a lot of opportunities for fingerprinting the clients. It'd be pretty easy to iterate through every release of Connector C, build it, and see how its default capability bits change. And pervasive attackers might use that to identify specific client software version and target those clients uh, based on other vulnerabilities they may know about that I do not know about. Uh, also, this gives the possibility of geographic fingerprinting based on character sets. If your uh, client says it's using the Koi 8R care set, which was formerly widely used in Russia, and it's traveling over an American uh, network, it will stick out like a sore thumb, vice versa. So as I said, this is a protocol flaw. It can't be fixed in a fully backwards compatible way in either the client or server alone. It requires an evolution in the protocol. I have a couple PRs up that do this. Um, submitted in early July. I initially got quite a bit of feedback. They're still open. Basically, the current status of these um, PRs is that they enable the client and server to do a new form of TLS handshake. MariaDB Handshake v2, and other compatible client libraries are interested in supporting this. And if the server says it can handle the v2 handshake and the client can too, then the client will send a greeting packet that contains much less information. All that that packet will say is, yes, I can do TLS. Uh, when I reported the previous issues, it became clear that it would take a while to figure out how to deal with them and uh, to resolve them. So I started thinking about smaller pieces of them that I could bite off that would be easier and quicker to solve. I found one immediately that I would consider a pretty severe vulnerability, uh, but also quite easy to fix. Um, 
it turns out that connector C clients reveal in plain text whether or not they are verifying the server certificate. This is a protocol level problem, uh, a subset of the previous ones. Um, and uh, one thing that contributed to it is that protocol analyzers like Wireshark formally showed this particular bit as unused, uh, but it should actually be labeled as does the client verify the server certificate? And I fixed this with a PR for Wireshark. In the real world, many deployed MariaDB clients aren't actually verifying server certificates, even if they're using TLS for encryption. And those clients are literally revealing whether or not they can detect the basic TLS MIDIM attack. I think the risks of this are potentially enormous. If pervasive attackers already know about this vulnerability, then they are already using it to opportunistically decrypt tons of connections from MariaDB clients without anybody noticing it. So it's a subset of the previous more complex vulnerabilities, but it can be fixed with a purely client-side change. I've had a PR for this up since early July. It could be done in one line, but I added a bunch of explanatory comments here. There's another issue that was reported in 2020, not by me, um, and that is that Connector C clients, which have been told to use TLS, will silently switch to a plain text connection if the server says it doesn't support TLS. And this is just an absolutely trivial downgrade attack that requires no knowledge or understanding of TLS whatsoever. It exists in this form since at least 2015. And uh, I submitted a few line fix for this uh, in mid-June. This is in some ways a technical problem, but in some ways a user experience problem. Neither the MariaDB-help documentation nor the online docs mentioned that this option might result in an insecure plain text connection. And I would say, going back to what users expect of TLS, it's just a massive violation of user expectations for an option called dash dash SSL to result in a plain text connection. Users who specify that option definitely don't want a plain text connection. The JIRA submitter made this case quite clearly uh, three years ago, I think. I don't think this behavior is expected by users, uh, and the industry standard is for designs to fail safe, not to silently downgrade. I've been making a fuss about this one recently as well. Moving on to other user experience problems, the defaults of MariaDB are too insecure. Uh, MariaDB servers accept non-TLS clients by default, uh, um, MariaDB Connector C accepts non-TLS servers by default, and it doesn't even try to use TLS if the server advertises it. Uh, MariaDB Connector Python is very similar, just a thin wrapper on Connector C. It's true that the MariaDB reference command line interface started defaulting to dash dash SSL in 2022, but still there's st no server certificate validation by default. And the previous vulnerability I described makes that option, dash dash SSL, even more ineffectual than might otherwise be thought. Uh, I'm going to skip over this because I already talked about it. But basically, if you actually want protection against the modern threat model in MariaDB, you need to use the command line option, dash dash SSL verify server cert. Um, the docs are a little cryptic, but they say TLS is also enabled even without setting the SSL option with certain other options. And I wonder if uh, the folks following this presentation, who are probably the know more about this than anybody else in the world, I wonder if anybody knows off the top of your head what happens if you use MariaDB dash dash SSL at CA to point to a specific root of trust but without the dash dash SSL options or the SSL verify server cert. If you know exactly what that option does, uh, think about whether individual users will understand it in full as well. So it's very hard to configure certificates to work correctly in MariaDB, to configure server certificates. I'd say the documentation on this is technically accurate. 
and that if you understand TLS very well and you understand the significance of phrases like certificate authority chain, you might be able to configure MariaDB correctly based on it. But if not, it's very hard to succeed by just experimenting. So let's say we have a typical three-layer cert chain. I have a server cert. Uh, it's signed by an intermediate CA, which is signed by a root CA, which has a self-signed certificate. That's the root of trust that clients are going to use to validate my server certificate. So a user trying to get this set up might try starting the server with just the server certificate specified, or with the SSL CA option mentioning the intermediate CA, or with that option mentioning the server certificate, or with that option mentioning the root certificate. They might start the client with SSL CA referring to the server certificate, or referring to the CA certificate, the intermediate CA certificate, or referring to the root CA certificate. All those server options will actually allow the server to start with no errors or warnings related to TLS, but all but one of the 12 combinations that I just showed will result in either of the following client errors, unable to get issuer certificate or unable to get local issuer certificate. And I'm skeptical that users will understand these errors um, or that these errors will guide users towards finding the right combination to use here. And I suspect that many users will just give up on configuring uh, certificates and certificate verification correctly, and they will just disable it. So this results from the fact that MariaDB is deferring to the configuration semantics and the error messages of the TLS library, OpenSSL in this case. And I think MariaDB needs better application-specific error checking and error messages. The server needs to advertise a complete certificate chain for this client's verification to work. So it should abort the startup unless it's correctly specified and ideally give a helpful message, something like, you specified a server certificate and private key, but not a complete certificate chain anchored in a self-signed root. See these options, fix that. And if the client can't verify a server certificate, it ex should explain where the gaps are in the uh, chain of verification that it's trying to do. Okay, so I want to move on here to talk a bit about solutions. Uh, I think there are basically four categories here, or three. First, improving the code. Second, improving the protocol. And third, keeping in mind that backwards compatibility should be less important than actual security and manageable complexity. Uh, the vulnerabilities like the ones that I've described here have existed in the code of MariaDB Connector C client and the server for at least a decade, and I expect that there are plenty of others. Uh, I didn't set out to find vulnerabilities in MariaDB. I haven't put too much effort into it, but it was quite easy for me to find them while doing related work um, or work that just touched on this incidentally. And most of these have taken me far, uh, far longer to explain and advocate for than it's taken for me to discover them. Uh, I would say that the code for setting up TLS and doing TLS handshakes in MariaDB uh, seems to be too complicated to easily maintain, and it's rarely, if ever, been simplified or audited. Uh, improve the protocol. The protocol that MySQL and MariaDB use for switching to TLS is pretty uniquely flawed. I've never seen another one that includes and requires sending so much redundant and meaningful identifying information before and after the TLS handshake. There's no fix for it that will solve the security problems and preserve client-server compatibility across the ecosystem. So it's going to have to be replaced, and I'm not saying to panic and do that immediately, but it's better to do that sooner rather than later before any kind of real-world exploit of the ensuing vulnerabilities is identified. Uh, Putting a quick plug, one way that I think you can improve the code and the protocol is by merging some of my PRs, or at least giving me feedback on uh, concretely on how to improve them. Uh, in particular, I'll highlight these 
pair of PRs for reducing information leakage in the handshake. I received a good amount of feedback on this early on. I responded to it and improved the PRs. I think uh, their form is better now, but I haven't had any actionable feedback or input on these in about two and a half months. Next, backwards compatibility. I think that backwards compatibility is generally a very important thing, and I understand why it matters across the long-lived ecosystem of MySQL and MariaDB and related clients and servers. But backwards compatibility seems to be too often trotted out as an excuse for retaining a lot of insecure by default behavior for too long uh, and allowing a lot of code to ossify. So when I've reported some of these vulnerabilities, I get responses like having software that's more secure means nothing if uh, connections uh, can't be made with any and all client versions or saying, we can't change the software because from the point of view of the current users, everything is working fine and it appears to be secure. I would say everything is not working fine for users who are using MariaDB dash dash SSL and getting silently downgraded to plain text connections as a result. Some of those users, at least, think they are getting the security that they associate with the TLS and SSL brand, and they expect it, but they're not getting it. I believe that many of them would be far happier for their connections to stop working with a new MariaDB client or server version than they would be if they find out that their usage of MariaDB has been compromised for years due to backwards compatibility concerns. And I think this, the, this breakage would be acceptable especially if the new releases include clear help messages and documentation about what's changed, why it's changed, and how best to adapt to it as a user. Uh, I've also observed in the last couple of years that there seems to be a strong tendency in MariaDB towards solving problems by making the software more complex uh, rather than simplifying it. If an existing feature is found to have a problem, the typical response is to add another option or feature, normally a non-default option. So users realize that the dash dash SSL option has no certificate va verification, add a new non-default option, SSL verify server cert to do that. Sometimes more complexity in software is necessary, but I would say it's usually a necessary evil. Uh, it's not a good thing. And I would say the complexity in MariaDB in this area of TLS in particular and security in general is unmanageable. Uh, it's too hard for end users to think about. Um, it's too hard for administrators of databases to think about, um, and it seems that it's often too hard for the developer community to think about, and that results in some of the vulnerabilities that I've described here. Instead of making things more complex, why not make them simpler? Make the defaults for options better so that users uh, don't have to change them as often make require secure transport the default in the server, make dash dash SSL verify server cert the default in the connector library. Frankly, I see no reason that both of these things couldn't be done in the very next major version or even the very next minor versions, uh, all supported minor versions of MariaDB clients and servers, along with clear communication about why it's being done and how it will improve user security. So uh, beyond just making better defaults, you can also remove bad or obsolete options or features entirely. If there's a good replacement for the feature, inconveniencing some users who are using an old, bad, or obsolete option, that's OK. Uh, as a simple example of this, I'll uh, reference something that OpenConnect did back in 2016. It used to have a command line flag to disable server's certificate verification. 
Many users were using this because it was convenient and because their VPN servers TLS certificates weren't configured correctly and they couldn't do anything about the server certificate uh, configuration as end users. But this option was also totally insecure against MITAM attacks. So this option has been removed, or at least now when you try and use it, it said this option was insecure and has been removed. You can either fix your server certificate, but we recognize that most end users may not have any control over that. They're not administrators of their VPNs. Or you can use a different command line option to manually verify the server certificate fingerprint. That doesn't scale so well, but it's at least secure against MITAM attacks. So to wrap up, thank you for attending my presentation. I know that in many respects this is a very critical take on MariaDB. Uh, I'm highlighting these issues here because I think they're important and I think MariaDB can be a much better tool and product, more widely trusted, used, and adopted if these issues are addressed. I want to thank uh, many of my colleagues for their support, inspiration, and feedback in preparing this presentation and uh, hopefully we have a little time for some questions.